Hey guys, this is Jenny and I am going to take this video and show you guys how to create a graphic similar to this. Uh, since we're going to create it from scratch, it's not going to be quite the same. Uh, from Photoshop and we're going to literally create, you know, create a document, create a preset and make this just from scratch. So what I, what I want to show you is the, the biggest complaint that I hear about white toner printing is that people don't like uh, the holes or the stripes or the lines. You know, they want it to look more natural. So in this video, I'm also going to show you how to add some distressing to your design so you don't have to choose holes or lines in Photoshop. So, or I'm sorry, in ProRip or TransferRip. So let's get started and I will show you how to do this. So... I'm going to close that out. So when you open Photoshop, it should look just like this without my designs in there. So, um, so we're going to choose create new and let's show you how to, uh, start your document off. Right. So, so let's assuming that you haven't done any of that, we're going to go to print. And in this case, we're going to choose, uh, a four, and I really want this to be the portrait, I mean the landscape mode. So I'm going to choose landscape over here. You've got your up and, you know, your long one, uh, that's going to be portrait. And then your wide one is going to be landscape. So I'm going to choose that. We want our color mode to be CMYK because frankly, a laser printer just prints better colors, better color accuracy using CMYK because it doesn't have the full gamut of RGB. So we're going to choose CMYK. We're going to choose a transparent background so we can export it as a PNG file. Um, so let's choose transparent. And we're going to call this feeling lucky. And now let's do a preset so we don't have to do this again. So we're going to call this landscape CMYK and you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to hit say preset and now let's choose create. Okay. So you can see the name is feeling lucky. So we don't have to do anything new to that. And now we have just a blank transparent background. And the way you can tell that is because your pixel, you, you've got this checkerboard background. We're going to also delve into some of these tools over here on the left. And we'll talk a little bit about color swatches and things like that. So the first thing I want you to do is if your screen looks different than mine, go ahead and go under window workspace and just reset your essentials. Now, the one thing that it's going to show you if you have a library is this library panel over here. Uh, I don't really want that showing, so I'm just going to right click on it and choose close. And so now that distraction is not there for me. Now the way Photoshop works is each time you add an element or a brush or something like that, you want to add a new layer. And these layers are kind of like, if, if you can think of maybe scrapbooking or something like that, it's literally putting one element on top of another, on top of another, on top of another. So these layers all sit on top of each other. And uh, that's very important and it's very helpful because you can change each layer individually. So let's get started by creating our background layer, which we're going to make the color of our shirt. So we're going to go down here to this round circle at, at the bottom here, and we're going to click on it and we're just, just going to choose solid color. Now I like, um, no shirt is truly black. So, um, but in this case, I'm just going to use like a gray, but you could make it black. You could really make it whatever color you wanted. I'm just going to choose this gray color. So I'm going to hit okay. And now we are set, um, to move on. So now I want to add some guides. 
So I'm going to go up here. Uh, that, that will help me keep everything in perspective. So I'm going to go up to View, New Guide, and I want a horizontal line. This will not show up in your final image. And I'm going to choose 50%. And literally type in 50%. And it's going to give us a guide in the middle of this A4 sheet. View, New Guide. And now I'm going to change it to vertical, 50%. Now, if you want to make this uh, a keystroke, check out my other videos setting up your document uh, and cr using actions, and that will show you, you know, how to do this with one keystroke. For me, it's F19. Okay, so now we've got some guides. Now let's create a new layer. I'm sorry, shift command or shift control N. So we're going to do new layer. And this is going to be the basis, you know, of our clover that we're going to create. So now what we want to do is we're going to go down here to our shapes tool. And that is like a, I'm not exactly sure what you would call that, maybe a blobby star. I don't know. So we're going to click on that. And now you'll see up here, you'll see this shape. Click on this down arrow. Now there are a gazillion shapes that you can purchase that are free with Photoshop. So I want you to kind of see all the different shapes there are available. Um, the one that we're going to use is in here. They do have a clover. I didn't like it. So we're actually going to use a heart. Um, to make our design. So let's click on the heart. And then I'm just going to click somewhere. Um, and now I'm going to go in the center and I'm just going to kind of draw out a heart. Now I actually don't want it to be that color. So I'm going to go over here to swatches. And your swatches, if you look, my swatch, these are all the swatches I've used recently, but let's, let's start with CMYK. So I'm going to scroll down to CMYK, and I'm just going to click on that, and I'm going to choose this green color here, and that's going to make our heart green. Now I'm going to go over here on the left to the Move tool, and you can access that any time unless you're in the Type panel by clicking on the letter, or by just typing the letter V. Okay, so let's move that up here and get it the shape that we want. So I think it, I want it to be a little bigger maybe. And if you don't like the shape that you chose, or in this case, I guess I'll delete it. So I'm just gonna hit my delete button, create, create a new layer, and let me draw that heart again. So I think I want it to be a little bit wider. There we go. So that's the shape that I want. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna, when that line turns purple, that means you're in the center. And I'm just gonna drop it in like that. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this exact shape that we just drew, and we're gonna make two, we're gonna make two copies of it. Um, so let's see how that works. So we're gonna right click on this and we're going to duplicate the layer and we're going to hit OK. And you should have these transform tools up here, but if you don't, up here on the top left, you're going to check the box that says Show Transform Controls. And in this case, you can either rotate it like so, or if you want to be precise, you're going to click on this little one of these little handles and then right click and choose rotate 90 clockwise. And you'll see it rotated it for us. And I'm just going to right click on it or left click and just kind of grab it and move it over to about there. Okay. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to hit return to accept that. Now I want to make another copy of this exact one. So I'm going to duplicate the layer, hit OK, and now I'm going to rotate it the other way. So I'm going to click on it, 
then right click and I'm going to flip it this time horizontal. Now you could rotate it 180 degrees if you wanted to, but I just wanted to show you that you can flip it horizontal as well. And then I'm just going to move it over here like so. And I'm going to hit enter to accept that change. So now we've got a, a shamrock um, that is moving right along. You can also rotate it like so. Let's say you wanted it to be more that way. And actually, I, I do kind of like that. So let's select that and maybe I'll rotate this one. And then, then, then it's not going to be quite so perfect. Okay, so now what we want to do is add a stem. So this time we're going to go back over here to our shapes and we can choose either the rectangle tool um, or we can find something else. And I think in this case, I'm going to start with a triangle. So I'm going to grab my triangle. I'm going to hit cancel here and I'm just going to drag out this triangle. Whoops. Command Z to stop that. I'm going to go back and hit V for my move tool, or you could select it up here. I'm just going to move that to maybe there. I'm going to turn it a hair. Hit OK. And now, let me just move that a little bit more. And now I want to just add a little bit more shape to that. So now we're going to learn about a layer mask and the brush tool. So uh, now I'm going to go right down here and click on this square at the bottom right, square with a circle, and that's going to give us a layer mask. You can also go to Layer, Layer Mask, Reveal All, okay? Because what we're going to do is we're going to paint out some of the design so you can't see it. So let's go get our brush tool. And your brushes, uh, we're going to use a hard round brush here because a soft brush, and you can find that the softness is up here where it says hardness. We're going to make ours 100% hard because if you use a soft brush, that gives you some transparency um, and a little bit of distortion of the color. And so we don't want that. That is never good for white toner. So we want a hard brush. Um, now let's make our canvas a little bit bigger. So you can choose the zoom tool by pressing Z on your keyboard and then just clicking on it and then you can just slide it up and down. You can also hit your space bar and move your canvas around like so by just hitting the space bar and right and left clicking on your mouse. All right, so I think that's pretty good. That's where I want it. Now I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to get my brush tool. Now to cover or to brush out, paint out some of your design, you're going to want to paint in black. So here's our colors over here. We've got, if you click on this little teeny squares, it's going to give you white and black. And so really you can paint in a layer mask with white or black. Um, or even some gray. But in this case, we're going to paint with black. So I'm going to click on that little arrow and black is going to be our foreground. And you want to make sure that you are painting on this layer mask. So it needs to be, have these little brackets around it. And that shows you that that's the active layer. All right, so uh, mine is black, so I'm just going to come over here and I'm just going to kind of draw the shape that I want. And if you don't like it, you can rebuild it. But, but let's start with that. Now with my bracket key, up or down, I can change the size of my brush. And so I'm just going to go in here and brush it out and you can see that it's just brushing out everything there. And now I'm going to go over to this other side, make it smaller so I can get right up in there to the edge. I'm just going to brush that out. I 
make that bigger or I could be here all day. And like I said, we're just brushing it out so you can't see it anymore. Now what happens if I make a mistake and do that? Um, I'll, we can do one of two things. We can do Command on a Mac or Control P on a PC, Z, Command or Control Z. That's going to undo it. Or you can paint in white. So let me just do that again and say, oh, whoops, didn't mean to do that. I'm just going to come over here and click on this or choose the X on your keyboard. Press X and you can just paint right back over it in white. See? Um, I'm just going to Command Z a couple times because I, I don't want to do that. And then X on my keyboard to go back to black. And we're just going to paint this color out. And so now we kind of have a basis for our stem. And now we can fine tune it if we want to. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to come over here and just kind of clean this edge up over here. Maybe clean the edge up down here. I don't like that, so Command Z. So you get the idea. Uh, I think that's going to work. So I'm going to go back up here to View, Fit on Screen. Um, actually, I don't like that, so I'm going to hit Z for my Zoom tool. Let's click in, go back to my Brush tool, and um, clean it up a little bit. Let me go to it. All right, so View fit on screen and there is our clover. So now I want to combine all these shapes into one shape and move on to putting our um, layer mask on for some distressed texture. So I've got this layer highlighted. I'm going to come down here to heart one, shift and click and that's going to make it a kind of select all four, right click group from layers and I'm going to call this shamrock or probably a better idea is to just let me undo that actually and I'm going to right click and I'm going to merge shapes and now we've got a shape that we like now now let's go ahead and add our layer mask and I think I'm going to go ahead and rasterize this shape. So I'm going to right click and just rasterize the layer. Now I'm going to add, apply my layer mask and we are good to go. So um, now that is permanent. There's no going back from that. Uh, you can command or control Z a few times, but once you rasterize that layer, it's finished. You're done. Um, so now what I want to do is go ahead and add that texture to this. So we're going to create a layer mask by going down here on the bottom right, clicking that layer mask, and now we're going to brush in some texture. So if you go to the White Toner Transfer Support Group file section, please download the White Toner Transfer, Transfer Support Group distress brush that I created and I'll show you how to do that. So go ahead and download it into your machine. Then you're going to come up here to your brush panel and we're going to go to brush and then we're going to click on these little, these three little lines and we're going to import the brush. So you're going to navigate to where you saved that brush and you're just going to click on it. So there is some raster brushes. Um, I've already got the brush loaded, but wherever it is, you'll just double click on it, choose open, and you're good to go. So I'm going to go and find it. So here's the brush. Um, it is very big. So if you can see it, that means you can type it on the, on the screen. But if it is as big as it can go, you'll see that your cursor changes to this X. Um, it doesn't mean you can't use it. It just means that you can't see it. So if you notice, I click on it and there's my texture, but that's big. I don't want it quite that big. So we're going to just reduce the size of our brush. 
until we can actually see it. And I think if you can see it there, I think that looks pretty good. Again, you want to make sure that you're on this layer and that you're painting in black. And you're just going to click. And now you have a texture on there that will be see-through. As you can see, if I click on this t background, let me go up here to the Move tool. You can see our checkerboard back there. And you can see that it's transparent. So when you print on your white toner printer, that those there's not going to be anything that shows up so that's your negative space so let's fit on the screen okay i'm going to turn my tech my background layer back on and now we are done with our clover so now let's add a little text so we're going to go over here to t or you can go up here to type but let's do t for text and then I am using a font called Hey Girl. Um, the fonts are gonna be whatever fonts that you have loaded on your machine. So I'm choosing Hey Girl. You can use whatever font you have that you like. I'm not sure if that's a free font. Um, I've got Left Justified chosen. So wherever I click my mouse is where it's going to start typing. You could also choose Center. Let's do that. And then I'm just going to actually go down here to the center of my document, click, and choose Feeling Lucky. Now, it's in black. I don't want it in black. So I'm just going to right click at the beginning and select it. I can choose white, like so. Now it is white. Now I'm going to go up here to my move tool and I can make it bigger if I want to I can make it smaller I can rotate it a little bit and I think I am going to rotate it a little bit because what I don't I'd really like to keep it all in there and I'm just moving these handles in and out till I feel good about it. I can also, and I'd really like that G to move over just a hair so it's in the stem. So let me double click on this again. And I double click, so now it's back in text mode. And I'm gonna go up here to type, panels, and I wanna go to get my character panel. And so here's my character panel. And what I really want to pay attention to is the space between the letters. So I can increase or decrease. So I'm going to just maybe decrease those a little bit. Maybe increase the size of my type. Rotate it just a hair more. Pull it down. Bring it in a little. All right, that looks good to me. I'm just going to hit enter. And now what I want to do is add a stroke or a line around the text so I can create some additional negative space uh, between the text and the shamrock. So I'm going to go up here to layer, layer style, and I'm going to choose stroke. And we're going to use a, a black stroke, or I tell you what, just to make it easy to see, I'm going to just click on that color and I'm going to choose some ridiculous color. I'll choose pink. And I do think, let's zoom in on this a little bit. Let me cancel that. Let's zoom in so you can see. Okay. Uh, layer style, layer, layer style, stroke. Let's change it, like I said, to some obnoxious color that you can see. And I do feel like two pixels would probably be enough to give us some negative space, but let's make it three. That way we're sure. 
and hit OK. And now let's view fit on screen. So that looks pretty good. Now there's another, and, and the reason I did it in pink is because we're going to have to merge this together to knock that stroke out to give us that negative space. So I think that we are ready to do that. Now would be a good time to save your file before you merge it all down. So I'm just going to hit save. And since I've already done this once, we'll call this Feeling Lucky 2. I'm going to hit save. Now I'm going to uncheck that, shift on this layer below, right click, well now I guess I'm not going to do that, I'm going to go to layer, merge visible, like so, and now I'm going to delete that pink that we did. And this is where we're going to use our magic wand tool. So let's make this just a little bit bigger so we can definitely see that pink. Magic wand. Grab that pink color. And just hit delete. Command D or Control D on a PC to deselect. Let's view fit on screen. Now let me get that t-shirt back. That t-shirt color. And now we have a graphic that we created from scratch in Photoshop that we can send over to ProRip or Transfer Rip and print without rasterizing. Now I do want to say uh, I have never used Transfer Rip, but for ProRip, um, once you get in there, I highly recommend that you uncheck the rasterizing you just uncheck that button because you don't want it to give you any kind of jagged edges um, and you can just you know increase your saturation or whatever you want to do and print so let me show you uh, how I do it now you may choose you may be able to send it straight from Photoshop I use a Mac so that is not an option so I'm gonna export this as a PNG file and before you do that, you want to make sure that you uncheck that background layer. So here's our PNG file. We're going to go File, Export, Quick Export as PNG. I'm going to call this Feeling Lucky 2. Hit Save. And now you can bring it into ProRip or Transfer Rip and print from there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to have a lot more to come um, on using Photoshop for white toner.